The linearization of engagement kinematics is crucial for our analysis and understanding of proportional navigation guidance. This is Missile Guidance Fundamentals, Section 4, Module 1. In the previous section, the kinematic equations we developed were nonlinear. In this module, we desire to linearize that engagement. We want to do this because it simplifies and enables linear analytical methods. It reduces our computational cost, and it also leads to new important concepts for future guidance work. To start, our objectives in this section are to linearize the engagement equations, interpret that linearization geometrically, and then outline a procedure for the simulation of the linearized engagement. At the end of this module, you'll have the understanding and equations to program your own linear simulation. Here's our illustration from section three, where we developed our kinematic equations. The nonlinearity comes from potentially large angles, for example, large flight path angle, large line of sight angle, large target heading angle. So our approach is to make the angles small and determine new engagement equations. This can be thought of as linearizing about the angles being zero. We can also think about it as linearization around a head-on engagement. In the previous section, we define closing velocity as minus the time rate of change of the range. Here, because VP and VT are essentially aligned with one another, we approximate closing velocity as the sum of the pursuer and target velocity magnitudes. Closing velocity in the linearized engagement is constant. Another important variable is time to go, which is the final time minus the current time. In linearized engagements, final time is a user-specified variable. As the current time approaches the final time of the engagement where the missed distance would be recorded, time to go approaches zero. The distance between the pursuer and target in the horizontal direction is simply the closing velocity multiplied by time to go. As time to go approaches zero, the horizontal distance between P and T approaches zero. Let's define the vertical relative position between the target and pursuer as the variable Z. Two time derivatives gives the relative acceleration in the vertical direction between target and pursuer, where the cosines are making vertical projections of target and pursuer acceleration. But we assume that beta and lambda are small, so we can approximate z double dot as simply at minus ap. We also need the line of sight angle. Taking the tangent and noting that lambda is small, we can equate lambda to the vertical relative position divided by the range. From line of sight angle, we'll determine line of sight rate, a key input to PRONAV. So that's simply going to be the time derivative of z over range, where we've defined range as closing velocity multiplied by time to go. And then chain rule gives us two terms in lambda dot. Now let's focus on that second term on the right-hand side. We did two things in this step. First, we made the substitution for range. And second, we're now taking the derivative with respect to time to go. So we did a chain rule to change the derivative of one over range to the derivative of one over range with respect to time to go. This gives the second term on the right-hand side in parentheses. And now the first term, we can also make a substitution for the range equation and multiplying by time to go over time to go for a common denominator, we finally get an expression for lambda dot in terms of time. So now that we've developed some linearized equations, let's reflect on what the geometry of the engagement is. So here is still technically the two-dimensional engagement, and we have kinematics in the vertical and horizontal directions. 
When we specify closing velocity as simply VP plus VT, we're assuming that those velocity vectors are parallel. And we also said that range was closing velocity times time to go. So the pursuer and target in the horizontal direction move at constant speeds until they are in the same horizontal position. That's at time to go equals zero. It also means that the initial range in the linearized engagement is dictated by the choice of the final time. In the vertical direction, we have relative position and the target can accelerate vertically. So for collision, lambda dot is needed as an input to PRONAV. We determined the linearized expression for lambda dot and then multiplied by closing velocity in n, we get the true PRONAV command. And since our line of sight angle is small, we're going to approximate the pursuer acceleration purely in the vertical direction. This leaves us with a linearized engagement where kinematics are only in one direction. Let's visualize this a bit more. The range linearly decreases in time according to the closing velocity. Therefore, the horizontal miss is always zero because time to go approaches zero as t approaches tf. As we mentioned, this leaves the kinematics only to the vertical direction, such that at time to go equals zero, the miss is simply the relative position in the vertical direction between pursuer and target. In the linearized engagement, horizontal velocities are constant, specifying TF determines the initial range, and the kinematics are purely in the vertical direction. To summarize the governing equations, relative acceleration and relative velocity broken out into Bronowski canonical form, line of sight rate, time to go, and the true pronav. Note that there's not much difference between pure and true here. Essentially, the only thing that would change is VC would be swapped for VP. Both VP and VC are constant. Now the simulation procedure for the linearized engagement. We start by specifying velocities so we can determine closing velocity, target acceleration, if any, heading error, if any, navigation gain, and, and the final time. We then also specify kinematic initial conditions. So that's relative position and relative velocity in the vertical direction. These inputs are used to calculate at the current time step line of sight rate. And then that's input into the kinematics, which are integrated once forward in time. Time to go is updated and therefore Lambda dot is updated and the loop continues integrating forward in time until time to go is zero. At time to go zero, we achieve missed distance, record that and any other quantities of interest. So in summary, we wanted a linearized engagement for more efficient analysis and to forward our understanding of proportional navigation. We assumed the 2D engagement was limited to small angles, and that allowed us to obtain linearized kinematic equations. The outcome of linearization is the kinematics are one-dimensional, expressed in terms of relative position and relative velocity. We introduced a variable called time to go, where final time, TF, is a user-defined variable. And the missed distance here is evaluated at time to go zero just from the vertical separation between pursuer and target. This linearization is a radical simplification from the nonlinear engagement equations. So it's natural to wonder how accurately this linearized engagement captures the nonlinear engagement. That'll be the subject of the next module. This is linearization of the engagement kinematics, missile guidance fundamentals, section four, module one.